All right, we got another shipment in today. This one's from Finland, Finlandia. It's the Scope Rider. So let's check it out. the latest addition of my test equipment, the Scope Rider RTH1004 by Rode and Schwartz. May the Schwartz be with you! So I'll give you a brief tour of the scope and tell you why I think it's gonna be the best scope for my needs. And then we can look at some of its features, including its interface with the computer and measure some waveforms. So I got it off of eBay for $4,000, which is about half price considering that it has the 500 megahertz upgrade and came with four of these scope probes. On the front, it has a nice seven inch touch display and all of the standard buttons that you'd have on a scope. On the top, it has four inputs. These are 300 volt inputs and they're all individually isolated. On this side, it's got a handle, so it's kind of hard to see, but it's just got the charging port here, which is an extra long plug. On the other side, it has an opening for a LAN connection, a USB, and the connector for the digital signals, which is an upgrade that's pretty expensive that I probably will not get. And then the scope probe calibration. On the back it has this little stand here and then it's just got these two screws to open up to the battery in case you need to get that out. And it's supposed to run for about four hours on a charge. So the scope probes I got with it are these 500 megahertz isolated passive probes, uh, part number RTZI10. And these are rated at 700 or 1000 volts, 10 times probes. They have this little protective cap. You can pull off here and you can see there's a large space here between the tip and the ground and it's got a lot of protective isolation. You can put a regular end on it. It clips on there and then this is the ground uh, connects down here below. So it's a little different than the standard probe. It has a nice clip on it. Um, but it also came with this little probe tip adapter, which is really cool. I thought I was going to have to make one of these because uh, when you're probing power supply circuits, if you have this loop in here or anything that's a high frequency too, anything noisy or high frequency, this ground loop picks up a lot of junk uh, so it doesn't work very well. Your signal is super noisy. So you want to get it like this and then you can get down there and have a real, a real short ground wire to get good signals. So I've got it hooked up now with channel one going to this signal I'm generating on this uh, XMC microcontroller board. So it's just, I think it's a sine wave or a triangle or something. Um, and we can, we'll just try the auto set since we're not in school anymore. See if it finds it. There it is. So that's pretty awesome. That's pretty clean waveform there. We can try probing the other signal on this board, which is some sort of a uh, oh, triangle. There's a triangle. 
Wow, it's looking a little funky. So now what we're gonna do is move it back to this sine wave and we'll go over to the computer and see if we can figure out the interface and measure some stuff over there. So I have plugged the ethernet in the side here. It has a wireless option, but I'm pretty sure mine does not have that. Well, it looks like I got the green hair here a little bit, but just have to deal with it. We're on the computer now and I've logged into the scope. So what you have to do is go into the setup on the scope and you have this menu here and you got to click this DHC button a couple of times on and off to get it to refresh and uh, hook up with your LAN and then get a IP address on your LAN, which mine is this one, 192.168.0.71. So that's what I put up here and it loads this web interface here. Click on screenshot and you get the current screenshot and then you have this file browser here. I'm not sure exactly how that works. This here is where you can write Skippy commands to test them out directly to it. And then um, these other things are just links to their website. So I design power supplies and when looking for what kind of a scope would be best for me, I was uh, thinking of these main factors. So I could get by with 100 megahertz, but I think 500 megahertz is pretty overkill for most of the stuff I do. And this one was 500 megahertz, so I figured definitely plenty of bandwidth. It's high voltage, and that's important because a lot of converters are a few hundred volts, and so you need isolated probes or um, high voltage active probes that are additional expense. And this one has four individually isolated inputs, which is just amazing for power supply stuff because you can look at voltages across the main FET and across like the uh, output inductors. You can have it on inputs and outputs of isolated stuff at the same time, and you don't need any extra equipment. So that's super amazing. It's a name brand, so I didn't really want to go with like a um, Regal kind of thing or anything that you'd find in like a fries. I wanted it to be something I could bring with me to customers and um, have them respect what I was doing and portable so that I could bring it with me and also have a modern interface. Um, I've got an old handheld scope, but it doesn't uh, work real well as far as being able to capture screenshots and do different things and the screen's very small. So that's the main reasons that I think this is going to be uh, the perfect scope for me as far as what I could find. In the setup, there's also this options section here where it shows which software keys you've installed. And these are all the extra upgrades that cost lots of money. So mine looks like it does have the 500 megahertz option, which was the main one that I wanted. But it looks like one of the things that I was kind of excited about was the web interface where you had a live view of the scope and you could press the buttons on here and it would change the actual scope and make it kind of cool for, uh, especially for screen sharing on the YouTubes. But it turns out that is an extra option. Here's a list of a uh, whole bunch of their options and you can see they're all pretty expensive. This right here is the web interface remote control option. So 415 bucks extra, I guess, if I wanna be able to use the virtual scope on here. And then it looks like they do have this one, looks kinda cool for power electronics option. <laughs> Might have to look into that. They have, of course, the mixed signal option. I don't think I'm gonna use that. I think um, I would probably try a dedicated USB style mixed signal analyzer that was a lot cheaper and just plug straight into the computer, but we'll see. 
Also, they have a wireless option for 345 bucks, so it does have wireless, but it's locked. This here is one big bundle they sell. It's like more expensive than the base model of the Scoop, 4,000 extra dollars. But that has all of these main options here. It's not all of the options, so you'd still have to buy if you wanted the full complete package. You'd still have to buy the uh, wireless option. This has the remote web interface, but not the wireless. And it has all these packages for digital stuff, but it doesn't have the digital mixed signal package with the actual connector you need for the digital port. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll definitely be using the scoop in uh, future videos, but uh, I'll have to give an update once I've used it more on some actual insights on how I feel about it. But let me know if you have any questions, if you're looking into the scope and you want me to answer anything for you or see how any of the features work. Leave them in the comments and I'll see you next time.